My birthday is coming up, and to celebrate, I asked my mom for money. I typically buy the same things every year with my birthday money, but this year I felt like switching things up. I've wanted a 3D printer for years, and after doing some research, I found that there were some great options currently on sale. I decided to settle with this, an Anycubic Viper, and as soon as I placed the order, I realized a major issue with my purchase. The major issue was that there were several major issues. First off, we live in a small apartment, so finding space for the printer was going to be tricky. I also wanted to limit wasted space caused by fitting a 3D printer in our abode. Secondly, we have cats, and numerous sources show that cats and 3D printers don't mix. Third, the printer took up nearly all my saved money, even with my mom's help, so I had to find a cheap fix. And finally, the printer was already on the way, and I needed to find a solution to all these issues in under a week. I realized very quickly I needed to build an enclosure to keep it in, and after scouring for good starting platforms, I realized it was going to be tricky. The dimensions needed for the enclosure left me with very few options, and the small apartment meant I needed to choose something as small as possible, while also being big enough to not be left with a cramped setup that I would hate using. Then, a miracle happened. I was visiting my mom's house and found this, an old part of her kitchen she held onto for nearly a decade, and its dimensions were perfect for what I needed. And for the low, low price of absolutely free, I was quick to grab it out of her basement and bring it home. The clock was ticking, I needed to get to work, fast. I disassembled and cleaned out the whole thing and test fit it in the apartment. Since it was originally part of a kitchen, it matched up perfectly with our kitchen at home. I repainted the whole thing a fresh coat of white and painted the handles to make them look less dated. This was a lot cheaper than buying matching handles. Then, to maximize space, I cut out the bottom corner so it could sit flush against the wall since there was molding preventing it from doing so. I then reinforced the bottom to make it more sturdy, but to also give me room to put felt sliders since being able to move the whole thing easily felt like a worthwhile investment. Now that the foundation was ready to go, I began working on the enclosure for the printer itself. I had a real solid start on things when the printer arrived. Perfect timing. I was able to build it and test fit it before I went any further. It was a tight fit, but it was going to be perfect. I found these great lift away hinges for the plexiglass doors I was going to put on, as this would be useful in the event I wanted to completely remove the doors to better access the inside. I got the plexiglass doors cut and installed the hinges. Then I carefully drilled through the plastic and attached the doors. Looking great so far. I painted the enclosure white but left the base platform unpainted since I was unsure what color would look best. I installed the door handles and then drilled a hole to run the cables through and it was finally starting to come together. Similar to how I wanted the doors to be removable, I wanted the roof to be removable too. I built the frame strong enough so I could throw stuff on top, again, trying to maximize space in our small apartment. I needed light inside to be able to see, so I installed these LED light bars. I made it so if I ever did need to remove the top, I could unplug the lights from the inside and they'd stay attached. The Anycubic Viper has a filament holder that sticks out way too far to fit in my enclosure, so I quickly threw together the most ratchet fix ever out of scrap wood and a door lock. If it works, it works. My temporary solution for plugging in a laptop and streaming camera was not to my liking, so I cut out a hole for an old recessed power strip I had from a project I had scrapped. And well, here it is, in its final form for now. I have plans to 3D print a phone mount for my streaming printing progress during live streams and a couple other quality of life changes that can wait, but I'm extremely pleased with how it turned out. If you're planning on making a printer enclosure, I highly recommend looking around for old kitchen cabinets. The size was perfect, it doesn't look out of place, and all the extra space is a huge plus. Hopefully you found this video and printer enclosure quality. And until next time, take care.